Hello guys. Well, it is Tuesday, January the 8th, and we have just a couple more class meetings left for this semester. And a couple things I just want to touch bases with you on before I get into the discussion for Chapter 15. Um, I have posted, or will very early today, post your elected officials assignments. Uh, noticed again that a number of you, not all of you, but a number of you are struggling with understanding the difference between state officials and U.S. officials. Uh, there have been several assignments where we've talked about the fact that just because somebody is called a senator doesn't mean they're a U.S. senator or just because somebody is a member of the House of Representatives doesn't make them a member of the U.S. House of Representatives. There's going to be some questions on the final exam dealing with this, so I really suggest you take a look at the comments I've made on your elected officials assignment and make sure you get a hold of me. Call me, come by my office, we'll set up some time to, to make sure you understand that concept. Okay, also make sure you realize that while tomorrow is the actual last day that we'll have lecture um, there are a couple of videos that you'll need to watch tomorrow uh, that will be uh, addressed on exam that we have the final exam that we have so uh, make sure you're watching those those videos that I will be posting tomorrow that will be dealing with a uh, concept of direct democracy okay Alrighty, again, make sure if you have any questions about your exam um, or uh, any of the assignments that you've turned back in, make sure you get a hold of me as soon as possible. This chapter that we're going to talk about today is Chapter 15, dealing with the federal court system. And before we get into what the con what the chapter says about federal court system just want to make sure you understand that there are actually 51 different court systems in this country there is the federal court system which controls federal law national law and there is a state court system in each of the 50 states so there are actually 51 of them Okay. Make sure you understand, as we're going through this chapter, we're going to be talking about the courts from a federal perspective, but many of the concepts that we'll talk about, especially in the early part of the chapter, apply to courts in general. When we talk, for example, at the beginning of the difference between criminal and civil law, there's criminal law at the state level and criminal law at the federal level. There's civil law at the state level, civil law at the federal level. So make sure you understand that many of these general concepts about law in, in, in that are given in general terms apply in most cases whether you're talking about the federal court system or the state court system. Okay, And then as you go through the chapter, the first part of the chapter is going to talk about again some basic legal concepts that apply to the courts in this country and the first thing that you're going to need to make sure you understand is the difference between criminal and civil law okay also as you're going through this section you're going to be talking about some concepts such as precedent understand what the word precedent means there's some latin phrases there's a latin phrase stare decisis we talk about habeas corpus there are a number of different concepts that they talk about in the first part of the chapter that you need to not only know the definitions of but understand the basic concepts around them Okay. Then the next thing that they're going to talk about in the tech, in the textbook chapter is going to be the three basic types of courts that you find. And those three types are trial courts, appeals courts, and then courts of last resort or the Supreme Court. And again, you have state trial courts and federal trial courts, state appeals courts and federal appeals courts, state supreme courts and federal supreme courts. So this idea of there being three basic types of courts, trial courts, appeals courts, supreme courts, apply to both the federal and the state court systems. Then another concept that they talk about in this chapter that applies, whether you're talking about the federal courts or the state courts, is the idea of jurisdiction. 
We have three different courts, the trial, the appeals, and the Supreme Court. Understand that there are different types of jurisdiction that each of these three courts have. And basically what that means is there's only certain types of cases that trial courts can hear. There's only certain types of cases that the appeals courts can hear. There's only certain types of cases that Supreme Courts can hear. So make sure you understand the difference between original jurisdiction and appellant jurisdiction as it applies to both the federal and the state courts. Then the next thing you need to pick up on and a major concept in this first portion of the of the chapter is the idea of due process. As a matter of fact, when we talk about due process in my face-to-face classes, we talk about the fact that courts whether they're state courts or federal courts, are not really all about proving guilt or innocence. They're about ensuring that due process is provided. We look at the fact that a person has a right to an attorney, they have the right to jury trial, all of these rights that we have, we have certain protections. That's what a judge is sitting there for in court, for the most part, is to make sure that your due process rights are protected. So, from previous chapters and this chapter, make sure you understand the concept of due process. Okay, And when I appeal, when I'm convicted of something and I appeal it, in most cases I'm not appealing asking that you find me innocent. What an appeal basically is, is saying that I have not been treated fairly by the, by the court system. Okay? That's where the concept of due process comes in. Now, the next thing that we talk about in the chapter is how federal judges get their jobs. We oft, often talk about whether the president appoints Supreme Court justices and the Senate confirms them. Make sure you understand that when the president is appointing federal judges, it's not just Supreme Court justices that he appoints. It's all federal judges are appointed by the president. So make sure you understand how federal judges get their jobs. The next thing that you're going to look at in the chap- chapter is the concept of judicial review. Make sure you understand what judicial review is. And almost as important as what judicial review is, make sure you understand where it comes from. Judicial review was not listed in the Constitution as a power of the federal courts. Make sure you understand the court cases that are involved in this concept of judicial review. And the textbook goes into some detail about how the courts use judicial review against Congress, how the courts use judicial review against the president, and those types of things. So make sure you understand what the concept of judicial review is and where it comes from. Then the last part of the textbook chapter is going to deal specifically with the Supreme Court. And basically what it talks about is how is a case handled by the Supreme Court. How does a case make it to the Supreme Court? What types of decisions is the Supreme Court making when they decide whether or not they're going to hear a case or not? And then the final thing that they touch on in the chapter that I want to make sure you're aware of is the decisions that the Supreme Court makes. This textbook talks about um, the majority opinions and dissenting opinions. And understand that when the Supreme Court makes a decision in a case, it's more than just the person who brought that case who cares about the decision the Supreme Court makes. If I'm in jail and I appeal to the Supreme Court and I ask to be let out, yes, I care whether or not the Supreme Court makes the decision to let me out or not. But the rest of the country really cares more about why the Supreme Court made that decision. Because when the Supreme Court makes a decision, they're creating precedent. It's almost like they're creating new law. And the rest of the country, the other judges around the country, the other lawyers around the country, the other people that are in jail around the country, they want to know why the Supreme Court let me out of jail to see if that's something that they can use to their advantage. So make sure you understand the the concept of the uh, 
majority opinion and the dissenting opinion. And I believe the textbook may even talk about something called um, concurring opinions. So make sure you read over that. Okay? Again, be prepared tomorrow to make sure you watch those videos that I post. So it's going to be a little bit of extra assignment for you for tomorrow. But it will benefit you guys tomorrow because I promise you there will be questions from those videos directly on the, on the exam. Okay, well, good luck. And if you have any questions about anything going on, make sure you give me a call.